Welcome to the Informed Pregnancy and Parenting Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Elliot Berlin. Today, I'm welcoming back a guest who is a model and television host and who got her career start with UFC. With an original plan for hospital births, she joins us today with her doula to tell us how labor and delivery went and how she's doing today. Ariane Celeste and Nina Phelan, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. Oh my goodness. I haven't seen you since like right before you went into labor. Yes. I've been busy. New mom busyness. <laughs> like deep in the mom parent cave? Yes, definitely. I'm just starting to feel normal, you know, with sleep and everything else. So everything's going good. <laughs> well, that's good. My baby is uh, 16 and a half years old and I still don't feel normal. <laughs> You're way ahead of the curve for me. <laughs> yeah. All right. So last time our audience talked to you, you and Rochelle were both pregnant and best buds and thinking about having babies that I assume will be lifelong friends together. And now you both had your babies. How was the uh, end of pregnancy for you? The end of pregnancy for me was chill. I think I was in some pain. Like obviously I was seeing you for pelvic pain and my hip opening and my abs that were tight and all that. So I was in pain, but for the most part, I had a really great pregnancy it was very chill and I loved it I honestly loved being pregnant so I was just trying to stay active because I am normally very active but I was in pain so I went swimming maybe like twice the week that I gave birth I was just trying my best to stay active even though it hurt to work out and swimming was really easy on my body so I was doing that and then I saw you and then I saw the acupressure massage therapist and then I had Raiden that week. <laughs> oh, that's a busy week, especially with the two swims. So I was doing a lot. I didn't want to get induced. So I was like, let me just make sure I'm staying active. And you know. I mean, staying active, I mean, you have a very active lifestyle to begin with, but at the very, very end of pregnancy, in the last week of pregnancy, what was your drive to stay active? Do you not feel good not being active or were you just not used to letting go a little bit? I think I'm just not used to relaxing. And like you said, letting go and just becoming a mom has slowed me down a lot. Being pregnant slowed me down a lot, but now I'm just like, okay, I, I need to slow down to be present for my baby. So yeah, I just have never really been the kind of like just chill person. <laughs> I'm always go, go, go. And I was really fearful of having to get Pitocin because I heard it's really painful. So I was just trying to avoid that as much as possible. Oh, you didn't want to be induced. You wanted to just go into labor naturally. Yeah. Okay. And just to establish the relationship here, Nina's your doula. How did you guys originally meet? So we met through Rochelle, actually. She yes. recommended her. I met her and I was originally just going to do hypnobirthing classes with her, like the one-on-ones. And then they opened up the hospitals to doulas and I was like, yes, okay, cool. I have to have her there. She just has the best energy, very calming mm. and nurturing and loving. And I'm so happy I had her there. Yeah. <laughs> I keep trying to get pregnant so Nina can be my doula, but uh, <laughs> so far I've been unsuccessful. Yeah. We've been to enough births with me, Elliot. That, it's true. Um, I'm the Robin to your Batman. Yeah. <laughs> Ari, you should share with Elliot and the audience the day that you went into labor, like that sequence of events, because, you know, I talk a lot about the power of the mind and how powerful we are. And this girl, oh my gosh, she's like, I'm not getting induced. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And... <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I did a lot. I wasn't even thinking like, oh, I'm going to like make sure this happens. I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to do this and just hope for the best and see what happens. And like I said, I saw you and then I had an acupressure massage and she was this beautiful little Persian lady with an accent. And I just remember her saying, you care if I, you know, touch you to maybe induce <laughs> And I'm like, actually, no, I don't. Like, do whatever you want. And it was great. And also the next day, I went swimming and I had sex. <laughs> and then I had the baby. <laughs> we did yoga. Remember, I saw you oh, that afternoon. We did oh yoga. Yes. And I saw her like 
three, four hours before labor began, we were doing a yoga session and yeah, you know, you looked like you were a little tired and but <laughs> did not think that you were going to go into labor. Four hours later, you call me and it's like, I think my water broke. <laughs> I think it was the combination of all those four things I was doing a lot, but I didn't even realize it was doing a lot. It, it made me feel better to be active. But was the point of those things in your mind, like, I got to get this baby out? No. You were just doing them, like yeah. chiropractor, reflexology, yoga. I had to see you because I was in pain. The reflexology stuff, I just wanted to, yeah, I was in pain. So I was like doubling it up. And Nina and I did yoga because I was like, I need to stay active. And then I went swimming because I would need to stay active. <laughs> and then we did the hibbity dibbity because I wanted to have sex. <laughs> well, that, actually, that's kind of great because I think that at the end of pregnancy, people don't sometimes even consider it. Oh, yeah. You know, I was a bit nervous, but I was just like, you know what? We're not going to be able to have sex for a really long time. So let's just... Mm -hmm get it on <laughs> and uh, somehow that combination of five things <laughs> yeah <it was> a <laughs> lot <laughs> i can see a little meme on instagram now these five things are sure to get you going exactly yeah. <laughs> all right so and then four hours later you said boom so how did it start for you so i was having what i felt like was the contractions that are not contractions oh, braxton, braxton, hicks. Hicks. braxton hicks i thought it was that which doesn't make sense now that I think about it. Cause I didn't really have any of that during my pregnancy until like the very end was where I started feeling it. I think so that happened that started around two and I was like, Oh, I think it's just Braxton Hicks. And I told my sister and I told Rochelle and I told Nina and I was just kind of like walking it off. I went to the kitchen to make food and it didn't seem to be going away they seem to just be getting stronger. And I was like, I don't know. And my partner, Taylor, he went to go run an errand. And I was just literally talking to my girlfriends because I was like, I don't know if I'm going to labor or what, but I'm in pain. And as I was walking, my water broke. It was like, I peed myself, I guess. <laughs> Unmistakable gush. Yes. <laughs> I was like, oh, well, that's interesting. I think my water just broke. And I took a video and I sent it to my sister. She's a nurse. So she's like, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's your water. <laughs> um, your water broke. So I called Nina and she started timing my contractions and stuff. And I think you listened to my reactions and stuff, my moans and my groans and stuff. And then she came over a couple hours later. Around two, it started. And at 5.30, my water broke. And then I think Nina came over at like seven or eight. Think, yeah. Somewhere around there. Yeah. All right. I have a couple of questions. What are you listening for, Nina, when that happens on the other side of the phone? Well, you know, there, there's a whole range of normal and not to generalize it, but often when a woman is moving into that space of active labor, she doesn't want to talk. She doesn't want to talk through her waves, through her contractions and the sounds are longer and deeper. Typically, if it's in the earlier end of labor and a woman's having a contraction, it would be like, oh, I think I'm having one. Okay. Okay. I'm breathing. I'm breathing. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's over. Oh, that's it. I, I'm doing this. This is great. Um, and it's like, yes, beautiful. That's usually a little early. <laughs> uh, yeah. They're like, I don't know what the big deal is. Why do people keep making a big deal? It's so not a big deal. <laughs> You're not just listening to like noises, but you're also just her voice and her vocal mannerism. Vocal mannerisms, the length of the sensations of the waves, how she recovers afterwards, what that space in between is like. And again, you know, it's not obviously a science, but it gives you a good indication of where a woman is. And as a doula, when you're playing the role, because you have a lot of hats, you do a lot of different things, but when you're playing the role of doula and you're going to labor with your client at home, when do you try to get there? What's the goal to arrive at what point? Yeah. So I tell everybody that I'll be there whenever you need me, but typically it's the beginning of active labor. So the timing of the waves are five, one, one, five minutes apart, one minute in length for one hour, 
Or if a woman is just needing more support, more physical support, I bring hypnobirthing if she needs some of that as well. And part of the reason also is that I see that there's so much value in a couple being alone together in the beginning stages. The intimacy is so important and that they're in this groove and this dance together. And then by the time I get there, there's this, I call it the bubble of love. And, and, you know, the, especially the partners have this level of confidence that they've been helping support until, you know, there's another person coming into the mix. There needs to be a song, The Bubble of Love, <laughs> on the Labor and Delivery CD the Bubble album. of Love. Yeah, I'll work on it. And so is that what happened for you, Ariane, at the beginning? You and Taylor just spend some bonding time? Um, bonding, yes. It was like me telling him, please, <laughs> my hips, squeeze them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was reaching for him for support. He was making sure I stayed hydrated and, and all that. And then as soon as I knew that Nina was coming, that's when he like got his bag ready and mm -hmm. took a shower. And I think I was with Nina for like an hour, hour and a half, maybe. Okay. That's an excellent time to go take a break. <laughs> <laughs> when we come back, we'll find out what happened after you guys left. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with Ariani and Nina. <laughs> Welcome back to the Informed Pregnancy Podcast. We are talking to Ariane Celeste about her birth story together with Jula Nina Phelan. Okay, so it's kind of exciting. You have five crazy things that you do. Is this, by the way, on your due date or after your due date? Two days before my due date. Two days before. Okay. Two days before your due date, you hit the quintuplet right, of three days. Uh, three days. <laughs> you hit the quintuplet of activities and boom, you start having what you think are Braxton Hicks, but they're the real deal. You call Nina, she can hear on the phone that you're slowing down. <laughs> A little bonding with Taylor. And you said squeeze my hips. Does that mean you were feeling it in the back? I mean, I think so. I was feeling it everywhere, I feel like. Yeah. So we learned this from Nina is to like bend over the birthing ball and to squeeze the hips from behind. And that was really giving me some relief. Comforting. Yeah. All right. And then Nina comes over and you're just there for an hour before you go to the hospital. Is that typical? No, it's not typical. Ari um, progressed really quickly. I think we were there. I was like, it was a short time, an hour and a half, two hours, but it was progressing and it's like time to go because I also knew her plan and was to get to the hospital. You can share what your plan was. Um, so I wanted to be mindful of that too, so that we're not laboring at home for a long, long period of time. Yeah, and I actually thought I was gonna be much better with pain, and apparently I'm not. Because when we did decide to go to the hospital, I was only a centimeter and a half dilated. And the pain that I was feeling, you would think that it was like much more. So I was like, okay, I'm happy to be at the hospital and give me the epidural, please. Yeah. So I have a few questions about that. First of all, you said only a centimeter and a half. Does that mean you thought you were further along? Yeah, I thought I was for sure. Just based on intensity of how things felt? Because it hadn't been that long for first birth. Yeah. It just was very painful to me. Yeah, I thought I would do a little bit better with the pain, but apparently not. You did amazing Thank with you. the pain and birth is hard and the timing of your contractions were speeding up. So you weren't really getting that much of a break. And right. when that happens and, you know, your water broke. So the timing of the contractions were happening. You'd get a little short break in between. So you did amazing. There's also because like I sometimes interview people I never met before. I don't really know, but I worked with you a lot during your pregnancy. And so, yeah, something doesn't add up a hundred percent because I know for a fact that you have a high tolerance for pain. We did a lot of intense things during your body work and you work out a lot. So you have a very strong, tight 
muscle type. And so releasing some of that stuff in areas like even in your neck and shoulders and your back and hips and your hip flexors, they're very intense. Things that uh, a lot of people, probably including me, couldn't really just take a deep breath and relax into. And for most of those things, you had great control being able to like tell your nervous system, even though this is intense, it's good for me. And you were able to relax and not fight me at all on really intense things. So I know that you do have a high tolerance for pain sometimes, right? Sometimes. <laughs> and also all that like insane working out that you do, it's like you push yourself through really intense things that a lot of us wouldn't be able to do, would have a hard time doing because you appreciate intensity for a good cause. So if in labor you were feeling that much intensity, there's in my mind, there's almost no question there are other things going up. For example, like Nina said, not a real break in between. And typically you're supposed to have this minute of intensity roughly, right? And then a nice break in between where you can calm yourself down and breathe and relax and reset and then just have another minute starting from zero again. But if you don't get that break, it just keeps amplifying itself. Or, you know, sometimes there's also emotional things that pop up and I don't know if they did for you related to childbirth, whether it's fear-related elements, about the birth itself or about becoming a parent. I see sometimes like right before you become a mom, sometimes fear pops into your head and it really changes how you perceive physical things that you're experiencing. So I don't know if you have insight onto why this was more intense physically than you thought it would be, but I know it's not because you have a low tolerance for pain. I guess I did have a big fear of the birth, but also I put a lot of pressure on myself to what I expected or what other people expected or like my partner's mom or whatever. Like, I feel like everyone made me feel like I have to have like the most natural type of birth and the people that have the most natural type of birth are the ones that are doing it right. Mm -hmm. But I've just had a fear of birth. So I was like, I don't want to go through that pain and that discomfort and just like the uncertainty of what's going to happen. So to me, it was almost like, get me to the hospital because the epidural feels like it's more of like a comfort blanket and I'm going to be okay with it, which it did. But then, you know, things got a little cray cray. Well, we'll, we'll get there in a second. But <laughs> I mean, first of all, what you just said, I think explains a lot for you. Like there's a, a big conflict. You give birth the way you want to give birth, not the way people want you to give birth. And whichever way you want to give birth, I think, is the right way to give birth. There's no right or wrong way. There's a million options in the free world today, and you made yourself aware of all the options, and you picked an option. So it kind of makes sense why things got intense for you. Like, there's like this inner emotional fight going on in addition to what you're feeling physically. And then also, I love that you shared that, because I know for a fact you're not alone in that, that people mm -hmm. feel sometimes pressured to give birth one way or another, even though their guts says, I want to do it this way, there's outside pressures pushing them another way. And well, I sometimes get labeled as this guy like, you must have a vaginal birth because I made a movie about vaginal birth after cesarean and vaginal breech birth. But it, it couldn't be more opposite. I'm an advocate for you to give birth however you want to, to know the choice. And it's just that nobody's really getting in the way of people giving birth you know, medicated or by cesarean, it's getting harder and harder to have a vaginal birth if you want one for various reasons. So that's why I advocate for those things. Anyway, I'm uh, really grateful that you just shared that because this is going to be one of those episodes now that you did that, that people are going to write in and say, I'm so glad somebody else said that because that's exactly how I felt. And that's how, you know, it had a negative impact on my birth. Anyway, so you get the epidural. And first of all, how's the placement of the epidural? Is it what you pictured? So the placement of the epidural, it wasn't too bad. I didn't see it. I had my eyes closed, so that made it a lot easier. It wasn't that painful. And yeah, everything was very relaxing after that. <laughs> was Nina really able to stay for that or do they? I'm trying to remember. Did they make me leave the room? Yeah. They made me leave and then I came back when she was nice and calm. And ah, Zen. Yes, <laughs> yes. All right. Did it have the effect you were hoping it would have? It did. Yeah, I was very relaxed. I got what they call the walking epidural, I guess. Oh. Mm -hmm. Again, I didn't want to not have control over myself. <laughs> That's another thing I noticed is that I'm like a control freak. I want to make sure that I know because it's fear based, I think, because I don't know what's happening. I want to control everything. And obviously that goes out the door with birth. Yeah. But it's not always an easy lesson. You sometimes it hold on to it till the last second <laughs> and then it gets sucked out the door. Mm. But yeah, I mean, I think also in birth, 
by observation, there's a continuum of surrender. Yes. And control. And everything that you do to try to control takes away from your ability to surrender and vice versa. So mm -hmm. sometimes you're holding on, you know, I don't have firsthand experience, but it a little bit reminds me of I hate roller coasters, but I go on them for my kids so that they won't hate roller coasters. <laughs> but because I'm terrified, I like stick my foot into the floorboard as hard as I can. Like I'm <laughs> stepping on some kind of brake that doesn't exist. And then one time I just let go. I was like, this is stupid. There's nothing there. I'm just going to relax. And I was like, oh, actually, this is kind of fun. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if there's any crossover analogy to childbirth at all, but that's a little bit sometimes when I'm observing it, like a fly on the wall, that's what it looks like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You just got to let go. So the walking is cool though. I mean, for you, it seems like it would have been a great option. Take off some of the intensity and still you get to move around. I feel like athletic people hate that feeling. They don't realize it, but they hate that feeling of being like totally paralyzed from the chest down. And you didn't have that. You're like at the one hospital around town that lets you walk around with an epidural. Yeah. So, I mean, I wasn't walking around, but it was the walking epidural, what they call that. So, so you know how sometimes, what do they say, Elliot? It's like a 50-50 or 60-40 chance mm -hmm. that you are able to walk. So when Ari got it, she wasn't able to walk, but it was enough to take the edge off and help her relax. Oh, the legs were too jello. Yeah. This is what we're saying. Yeah, it's not an exact science by any means. I mean, in perspective, this is right in the middle of the pandemic, right? So it's not like you could have gone too far anyway. <laughs> There's no, I'm just saying they won't let you leave the room. <laughs> Did you have to wear a mask the whole time at that point? Yes. So I was wearing a mask as well as Nina and my partner Taylor. And I mean, every time the nurse left, I was taking it off. I was not happy about the mask, but luckily it was like one of those nursing ones that are really light. So I was okay. Cool. Yeah. It's like just one more thing to do when the nurse leaves the room now. I was like, <laughs> 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 all right, things get cray cray, but we have to take a break. We will be right back. Welcome back to the Informed Pregnancy Podcast. Uh, things get cray cray. Tell me about that. So I just want to say I had the most beautiful room. I don't know if they laid out the red carpet for me and everything. I had a view of the Hollywood Hills, this big open window. I mean, it wasn't open, but it was just like twinkles of the city. And we had our twinkle lights on and yoga music and everything was so zen. It was beautiful. And I was just about to fall asleep. I think it was right before midnight. And the nurse came to check on me. And she said that his heartbeat was dropping. So she moved me to a different position and it was dropping again. So then she moved me one more time, I think. And then it was dropping again. She's like, okay, his heart's dropping. She pushed a button. And then all of a sudden, like, it felt like 15 people rush into the room, turn on the lights. And they just like kind of, grab me, flip me over and put whatever they need to put into me to do a emergency C-section. And that was like really intense going from one extreme to another and having so many people in my face. And it was like, they were trying to explain to me what was going on. But at the same time, it was kind of like, felt like they were panicked. So I kind of felt like I have to panic, but I just focusing on my breathing and that helped me to not freak out because I was about to burst into tears at any moment and just like lost my stuff. And I didn't because of my work with Nina <laughs> and being mindful of everything and just breathing. So they took me back to the emergency room. And again, it just felt like a movie. They just started poking me with all kinds of stuff. And But they took you to the not operating room? Yeah, so they pushed me out. Oh, yeah, they took you to the operating room. Do you know how far along you were at that point? I can't remember. So I don't think they did a vaginal check prior to this, but she was starting to relax with the epidural. Like, we literally... Oh, it was after, right after the epidural. It was probably like a couple of hours or an hour after, but literally... Like Ari fell asleep. Taylor and I were like all he's on the like the, the little couch. I'm on the little, you know, chair. And all three of us, I remember, there was just a sigh, and we all just fell asleep. 
and then a nurse came in and it was boom, 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 just wow. like that. So startling. It was. Wait, so, and then were you allowed to go to the OR, you know, or? No. no. So, so just like Ari said, you know, once that nurse hit the button, the, the code blue or code red, there was at least 10 people who rushed in and um, surrounded Ari and Taylor, bless his soul. I mean, it was really scary. And a resident was just like, in front of him, looking at him, look at me. She's saying, look at me, everything's going to be okay. And he's trying to like, look at Ari and to, to see what, what he could do. But this resident was just stay with me. Everything's going to be okay. Okay. We're going to take her to surgery. You have to suit up. And then they give me the stuff to give to Taylor and I'm getting him ready. And then literally within three minutes of all of that, they were all out the door oh, into wow. The OR. Oh, oh, so what happened at the OR? So I got the medication to have a C section. I just remember my whole body just like going really, really, really warm and I couldn't feel anything. So I go from like being relaxed and numb, but you know, I could still like function, but this was just like I had no control. I finally like asked to have Taylor in because they, it was just chaos. I was. I was so scared, but I was just breathing literally very, very loud. Like, <sighs> and they're like, good job. Good job. You're doing great. And then I'm like, can I please have Taylor in here? And so they let him in and he's holding my hand. And I'm like shaking because of the adrenaline, like my whole body starts shaking and I, I can't even hold his hand. And I'm just like, okay, I really wanted to cry. I really wanted to cry really hard, but I was like, that is not gonna make anything better. So I looked at Taylor and I looked at him and I could tell he was just trying to stay calm for me and he didn't lose it. And it helped me to stay calm. Uh. And then my doctor walked in, you know, it's all these doctors and, and nurses and stuff and they're great, but this was not my doctor. So I was just like, okay, she got there and she was awesome. She made light of everything. She's like, you know what? Sometimes babies are really dramatic and this is what your baby's <laughs> doing. He's being very dramatic and just know that everything's going to be okay. And as soon as his heartbeat regulates, we're going to take you back because I know you want to do a vaginal. I believe in you and I know you can do it. We're just got to like make sure he's okay first. And I'm like, okay. When she's holding my hand, I'm just like, thank you, God. And that was like when my faith really popped in because I was like at this moment I surrender I surrender to you God whatever you want to happen right now let it happen I just want my baby to be okay and he took care of us <laughs> that day Aww. yeah it was great and I so did so, get to go back I got to go back <laughs> yeah was and, it much longer from there no actually so when they took me back I was, I think, six centimeters. Mm -hmm. So it was just back to my Zen room. And I kind of like laid there and I was so exhausted. And we were all a little like traumatized. So <laughs> we were like, okay, let's get some rest. And I don't know how much longer it was after that. A few hours, maybe. And the nurse came in to check on me. And she, again... She was putting me on my side. And again, she was like, oh, he doesn't like this side. I'm like, oh God, what does this mean? Like, not again. She put me on my back. Oh, he doesn't like that. She put me on my side. Oh, he doesn't like that. She's like, you know, I'm just going to give you a, a vaginal check. And she was like, that's why he doesn't like it. Because you're 10 centimeters now. You're ready to go. You're ready. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> Let's do this. Because I really don't want to go through what I just went through. Yeah. Scary. Yeah. So, that was like a big sigh of relief at that point. I remember it's like, ah, let's do this. And you get your Nina back. Yeah. <laughs> Not being in the OR, right? Oh, oh no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was there after we came back to the room to chill out and get ready for vaginal birth. Yes. So, so you didn't want to be totally numb, but I assume by this point you still are from. Oh, yeah. I was, I was <laughs> jello. Jello. How is pushing on your jello um and your ariani <laughs> <laughs> so i just remember my aunt saying like 
push kind of like how you have to go to the bathroom, like down to your rectum, but also like my, I think my doctor had said kind of like when you do a sit up, like breathe into it, but down to your rectum. And I'm like, okay, I can do a sit up. And I know what she's talking about. So let's do this. And I, it kind of felt like I was pushing into a sit up, but I was pushing my baby out. (laughs) So So it felt like pressure. It it just felt like pressure. So you started doing crunches in the middle of labor. (laughs) Even then you couldn't take a break from your workout. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But you could feel the pressure you're saying, but no pain. No pain, just pressure. Yeah. Is it then a very like guided sort of pushing where? Yeah. So all the nurses and my doctor and Nina, and of course my partner were there just kind of coaching me through it and encouraging me. I had my eyes closed the whole time and I was just pushing as hard as I could. I mean, with the strength that you have, those pushes probably were pretty effective, even with you not being able to feel very well. Yeah. Imagine how long did you push for? I think the nurse said I pushed for 30 minutes. Oh, yeah. That's amazing. Right? For a first baby. (laughs) And with, like, being totally, completely numb. I mean, it was amazing. She's like, I'm 10 centimeters. Let's get this baby out. (laughs) (laughs) I was was not (laughs) drama before, so. What about that first moment where you get to meet your baby? Oh, man, it was the best. It's just, like wow, this is my baby. It's so beautiful. I was just kind of in shock. Like it was such a long and dramatic journey to finally have him in my arms. It was just like, okay, it was worth it. (laughs) Definitely worth it. (laughs) Yeah. It's so incredible. Just that moment right after your baby comes out, whatever led up to it, whether it was a few hours, a few days, some switch goes off the second you get to hold them and see them and the world is just okay. Obviously not for everybody, but just generally speaking. And it's cool to witness. So how has recovery been for you? So recovery has been pretty good. I would say the first month was tough. I think I went through a little bit of some postpartum depression only because again, I'm so used to being on the go And this has just really slowed me down and has opened my eyes to what's important. Like I don't have to always be go, go, go. And I have this precious angel in front of me that I need to be present for. And I think it was also the medications. I'm not like a big medication person. So feeling just icky, not feeling like myself. And then on top of that, you know, you're bleeding and you're sore and there's no sleep. There's all kinds of things going on. Your nipples are sore. So the first month I would say I was tough, even though I may not have like showed it much because I'm like a tough girl, but it subsided. I want to say once I was able to like move more, like be mobile, go on a walk or get out of my condo and just get some fresh air. And then after six weeks, I was just so ready to get back into my workouts. But I'll also add that there was a lot of stress because I was moving from our condo to our house now. And it was just like, again, that whole like, I got to get this done thing was still there. So there was a lot of stress that shouldn't have been there when you have a baby. So like I have my baby fresh little one. And then there's like a ton of boxes like in the corner. And I'm just like, I got to get out of here. I got to get out of here. But it was a little complicated just because we had to move and stuff. So extra uh, transition in the middle of a transition. So many transitions and in the middle of pandemic and you can't see your family or even if you want to, it's like in the back of your head, you're worried about COVID. And so it was a lot, but I'm feeling a lot better. I do also want to remind anyone that postpartum is no joke. And just because your body was able to do something before, like you can't just bounce back like that. Even if it looks like, oh, you know, I'm back to normal, which I'm not, but you got to keep in mind your body has just gone through so much change. So ease your way back into workouts. That's what I also have to tell myself now because I'm four months postpartum, but I went back to working out after six weeks. And I was like, 
back to lifting weights and moving. And sometimes when I move, I'll get like a sharp pain in my hip. And I'm like, oh, like that hurts. And it's like, you got to have grace and be gentle with your body and realize that it's going to take time. Like, I just wanted to be like, snap back and go back to, you know, where I was, but it just doesn't happen like that. So I pinched a nerve oh, and no. I've been dealing with that. Yeah. Um, and you're not even here anymore. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so I've been having to go get treatment here and um, I'm feeling a lot better, but I'm just trying to be more gentle on myself and on my body. First of all, you look fantastic. I mean, you look fantastic, but your energy is just so relaxed. And we got a sneak peek of you with your baby. And it's such an amazing little bond you guys clearly have there. It just looks fantastic. Mm -hmm. So my question is, if you did this whole thing all over again one time down the road, it was not too soon to ponder. <laughs> um, do you have ideas on what you would want to do the same or what you'd want to do different? Um. I think I would just hopefully not put so much pressure on myself to be as natural as possible. Like if I want an epidural, like just be like, I want an epidural, you know, mm -hmm. like I kept telling people like on the down low, like, Oh, I just want to do it as natural as possible. But you know, if I have to, I'll get an epidural. But then when it was like the week of, I told Nina, I'm like, I think I'm on an epidural, but mm -hmm. it was just like, I kind of knew that already, but I was just like trying to fight it. But the next time around, I just want to be like, okay with the fact that I want an epidural and mm -hmm. just go in with a positive outlook on it rather than like a little bit fearful. And I think I had a scare the first time and, and I got through it. So I feel like I can go through anything through birth now, kind yeah. of. <laughs> yeah. I love, I love, love all of that. It's uh, the person who's in the driver's seat is you. And yeah. the only opinion that really matters is yours when it comes to choices like that. When it comes to safety, obviously your provider makes a contribution as well. Yeah. But yeah, I appreciate that you have shared this experience and have shared that element of it where you wanted something and for whatever reason didn't feel okay about saying this is what i want and i don't care what anybody else wants but now that you've been through the experience you've really emerged stronger knowing and that's a totally different kind of strength the strength to be able to say this is what i want and speaking up for yourself and going to get it so overall a beautiful story this is my first time seeing you even though the audience can't see you my first time seeing you since you were nine months pregnant and mm -hmm. um my God, you just look like someone put a baby right in your belly, perfectly placed. And <laughs> now it's just not there anymore. <laughs> Magic. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm trying to stay myself. I don't want to lose myself, you know? I like to be cute and do my hair sometimes. Not all the time. Sometimes I'm a hot mess, but I'm like, I'm going to see them, so I'm going to put some makeup on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, thanks. yeah. And yeah, I, I'm feeling a lot better. Raiden's doing so well with sleeping. Thank God I'm going to knock on wood right now. <laughs> I'll knock on wood too. For yeah, why not? I'm in. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> He's such an angel. So we're really lucky. Do your babies get to uh, see each other, Raiden and Dakota? So they met, yeah, one time. In person? Yeah, in person. So she was going up to Denver and she stopped here and, and they stayed the night. Oh. I'm like, you guys need to stay here more than one night. You got to stay here like a week or two. <laughs> and same, we're going to flip flop. So I'm going to go out there and she's going to come out here. But yeah, so they got to meet. Raiden was just like looking at him like, what's up? And yeah. <laughs> really Future cute. best buds. <laughs> yeah. They're so cute. All right. Well, thanks again for sharing your story. And Nina, thanks for coming along. I always learn something when I hang out with you. And today is no exception. Where can we find you guys online? Um, Instagram at Ariane Celeste. Ariane Celeste. And Nina? I'm at the Soulful Birth on Instagram and soulfulbirth.com. Soulful birth and at home. Thanks for listening to our podcast. For more pregnancy and parenting media and information, visit us on Instagram at Dr. Berlin. It's D O C T O R B E R L I N.